Hi everyone, and welcome to our video on finding a second derivative and then evaluating the second derivative. Okay, so finding the second derivative, the very first step, we, we need the first derivative. So let's find that. This one is set up for us. It looks like it's just a power rule problem. So our first derivative will be f prime of x. Now I'm gonna show the, I'm gonna do it the quicker way. I'm gonna say, well, this four would multiply three to get 12, and then minus one from the power, so 12x cubed. This 2 would multiply that 2 to get 4, and then minus 1 from the power would be x. The next term is linear, so that means just this coefficient is the leftover final answer for that derivative. And then the last term is constant. Derivative of a constant is 0. Okay, so that's our first derivative. Now in the green, I'm gonna do the second derivative because this one's ready to go already also. So let's just jump right into it. So this three can multiply the front to get 36 X and then minus one from the power would be two. This next one is linear. So that means it's just plus four. And then the last term is a constant. So that means it, its derivative is zero. So there we go. So we found the second derivative. Now, I'm just rewriting it so I can see it all by itself for the next step. So now we're going to do the f of negative 2, f, f double prime of negative 2. So f double prime of negative 2 is equal to 36. And then what we're doing is just changing those x's to be parentheses with negative 2, just like that. Okay, and then now we'll simplify. So the second order derivative at negative 2 is equal to 36. Negative 2 squared is going to be positive 4, and then plus 4. And then however way we want to simplify it, so this will be 144, and then plus 4. And so then we've got the second order derivative is 148. Okay, that's it. Okay, and still this is, so the second order derivative we'll use in other scenarios. It's still telling you a rate of change, but it's telling us the rate of change of f prime. f prime of x at x equals negative two. Okay, so that's what that number represents. If we did f prime of negative two, that number would have represented the rate of change of f of x. Okay, so um, it's still telling you a slope, but it's it's really the slope of f prime. Okay, so if we did graph f prime, um, we could sketch out what that slope looks like. Now that's very steep, but it is just telling you how, again, quickly something is changing. Okay, but that's it for now. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time.